Hello YouTubers, uh, Bill Griffith back again. Uh, today I'm gonna do a video on how to build a VPC, virtual private cloud, in the IBM public cloud. Uh, this is a diagram that shows what I'm gonna do. As you see, we're uh, three zones. These are data centers that are separated uh, uh, kilometers apart, uh, have a very high speed network uh, between them, and I'm gonna set up my own private IP address. So you see these subnets 10.10.10.0. <clears throat> that's on the class um, B network here, 10.10.0.0 slash 16. That's the VPC, virtual private cloud. And so everybody could, each uh, cloud user, IBM cloud user could create their own VPC and use these same IP addresses and not conflict with each other. That's part of the benefit of a virtual private cloud. And then of course, if I had these applications on premise, this is just a WordPress applications for demonstration purposes then I could bring that application over and not have to change the IP address. And so that's one of the benefits of doing this in a VPC. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go up here to the IBM catalog and go to VPC infrastructure. And if you'd like to follow along, you can see this is the uh, URL. All right, so the first step is to create a Gen 2 VPC. Give it a name, so this is gonna be in the Dallas area. As you see here, Dallas. So I'm going to call it um, US South Dev v VPC. And a resource group, let's uh, give it a new resource group called Bill's Resources just so I can uh, keep track of um, my projects versus other projects. And then I'm going to allow SSH login. That's gonna set up the security groups. Uh, I don't need enablement uh, to the classic uh, VSIs. Uh, prefix, I don't want this because I'm going to set my own prefixes so I can set my own subnets. And then that's all I need. So create. So you see that uh, created uh, pretty quickly. And now I can change these default ACLs if I'd like. So rename it to you know, and I can change the default security group also. Okay, so I renamed that. Now I drill into my VPC. I'm going to click address prefixes, and then I'm gonna click new prefix. And then here in the prefix, I'm going to enter 10.10.10.0 uh, slash 24. Might be hard to see here and that's gonna be my Dallas one location. So I do save, All right? Now I'm gonna do another one, dot 11 for my database uh, subnet 24, and this is also gonna be Dallas one. And so now I won't bore you with uh, seeing me do the rest of these, but I'll do that real quick. All right, so there you have it. Okay, so now what I wanna do is go back over here, go to my VPC layout, and create my subnets and click the new subnet button. So the first subnet, I'm gonna call it web one. So I'm gonna do that again. And this one's gonna be called web two. And I'm gonna do create. All right, so now you see that uh, my subnets are created. Now, this is one way it's hard to sometimes see it. So I really like this VPC layout. What we wanna do is uh, create uh, security groups for these databases. So right now everything's in the web tier. So I go over here and click security groups. You'll see that I have a web security group. That was the default security group. And I'm going to create a new one for the database tier. And so now it should look something like uh, my picture here. And when it does, you can do create security group. There is a new instance. So I'm gonna create a new instance in the database one. And so this is going to be my DB1 and it's in Dallas One Data Center. And for my database, I'm gonna use the Power, uh, Power 9 CPU. You see the price here, you see it's got two cores, virtual cores, eight gigs of RAM, six gig networking. And of course that goes up uh, quite high. You see I can get 96 gigs here of uh, network performance. So very uh, good for horizontal traffic between the web tier and the database tier if I want it. Uh, but for this demo purposes, I'm just gonna go with the <clears throat> smaller balanced uh, choice here. And uh, for this app, WordPress and um, MariaDB, uh, it runs on Ubuntu. So I'm going to choose Ubuntu. And you will need a SSH key. Where is that so you can SSH into it? You can click 
into it. And uh, now it's important to get the right security group. So this is the wrong security group by default. It needs to go to the default, the database security group, and it is on the database subnet because that zone has two subnets. So I do that and I do save. And so that's starting and that'll take, you know, 20, 30 seconds or so. So that's the database. Now I'm gonna do another one for the web. So I am still in Dallas one. And in this case, I'm gonna choose the x86 and notice it's a little bit more expensive uh, for uh, that compute and even less performant on the networking. Uh, and that's the benefit of this power is it's more bang for the buck because uh, the architecture allows more processing uh, than x86. So it's more cost effective if you got the work to, to get the, the horsepower out of it. Now in this case, since I'm going to install WordPress, I need a shared file system application and files on. So I'm going to add a new data volume. So as you see here, I call it uh, web1-ww for the World Wide Web volume and it's just tiered and I'm just going to make it 100 gigabytes three IOPS are fine. Uh, it's gonna be encrypted by IBM. And uh, then I'm going to turn on disable, uh, enabled auto delete, which means when I delete the VSI virtual server, it's going to delete the disk also. Uh, now you see this is the wrong subnet. This is a web tier, so I want this to be web and it needs to use the web security group. So I get that and then I do create. And you'll see that the database uh, server is already uh, back on. And you see it's got a private IP address. It does not have a public IP address. So there's no way of pinging this computer or connecting to it uh, unless you're inside of this uh, VPC or you have direct link or a VPN connection into it. So now I'll pause and add the rest of these. As you'll note, all of these IP addresses are private. I cannot get to them from my laptop without VPN or direct uh, link connection. So what I'm gonna do is assign a public IP address to my web one. This makes web one like a jump server. And then I can do SSH to root and that IP address of that uh, floating IP address that I just copied in. And so now I'm in this web zero one and I can do a you know, cat etc os releases <clears throat> and you'll see it's Ubuntu. So now let's test that I can ping all of these IP addresses. Inside of this web tier, now I do ping 10.10.11.4 and you'll see I can ping it. Now let's try pinging .4 which is my web 2 as indicated down here to get, because my SSH key is not on my web data, uh, my web server so I need to SSH through that web server and that's this dash J uh, flag. All right, and so now I'm gonna jump through into my database, through my web tier, and now you'll see that I am on my database and I can cat etc os release, and you'll see that it's Ubuntu, and I can do ls cpu, and you'll see it is little Indian power nine. So uh, power nine of uh, chip architecture, which is better for database applications and uh, multi-threaded applications. All right, so now what we wanna do is we're gonna set up Nginx uh, as a web server so that we can test uh, connecting to these VSIs across a load balancer. Get dash Y update. And then I'm gonna pull up another one for web three since this is a three zone cluster, which gives me a much higher availability. I can get five nine availability. So let's get that one updated. Go back here, let's get Nginx installed. Now these steps normally I would put in the user data whenever I provision. So that's installing Nginx and then I'm going to start Nginx on each of the uh, servers. So web two, web one, and then I'm gonna start it <clears throat> and start. So now they're all started. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update this um, default uh, homepage for Nginx and uh, put something in there that's unique so that I know which server I'm actually hitting because I'm gonna have these in front of a load balancer. So instead of welcome to Nginx, I'm gonna say welcome to Nginx on web one. And then I'm gonna save that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other 
servers. All right, and so then I can test it local by curl localhost. So now what I want to do is set up a load balancer in front of this and test it out. So go back over to my VPC and I'm going to choose the load balancer icon here and choose new load balancer. So since I know this is going to be part of WordPress in the future, I just call it WordPress load balancer and uh, I'll create another tutorial show you how to make uh, WordPress highly available in an active active fashion as well as MariaDB in an active active database. So you can really get uh, high availability in load balancer. Uh, it's in Dallas and it's going to be public facing, meaning this is going to have a public IP. So now I know this is routing web traffic, so I want it to route across all three data centers uh, those web servers. So web one, web two, web three. And uh, then I say a new pool. This is the backend servers that I'm going to connect to. So I'm going to call these uh, web servers. Right. So then uh, this is my uh, web servers. Just leaving the defaults here and click save. Uh, and now I need to have the front end. What address am I listening on? So then I do a save and you'll see when the traffic comes into port 80 on HTTP, it's going to route this traffic to the web servers, that pool of servers as defined here. And so now this is the definition. Now I need to attach those instances. It's good. And then I do attach. And so now I have all of those instances in that backend pool. And then I do create load balancer. And uh, this uh, is not coming back up. And I forgot that I am actually blocking port 80. So what I need to do is go back here to my security group. And in the web tier, I am not allowing port 80 in. So this health check will never pass. So I need to allow port 80 inbound from any IP address. Uh, just to simplify this, so I do save. And so that applies immediately. And now if I go back to my, v my um, load balancer, then that health check uh, should start passing and you see that it did, right? So now I can get to all of those servers. So now I can copy this host name and you see I went to web two. If I do a refresh, I'm on web one, web two, web three, as it's doing a round robin cycling. All right, so there you have it. Thanks for watching.